Welcome, today I'm going to be showing you the differences between mid-journey and a locally hosted version of Stable Diffusion. We're going to compare some of the pros, cons, drawbacks, and then you can make your own conclusion based on the data. Let's get into it. A few days ago, I recorded a video and I said something very controversial. I said that local Stable Diffusion setups like Invoke AI and Automatic 11.11 are better than mid-journey. And that obviously sparked a lot of discussion in the comments. One of the criticisms I had was that I didn't actually go through and show a side-by-side -side comparison between mid-journey results and stable diffusion set up locally. That's a completely valid argument. And so today I'm going to show you side-by-side -side images of both systems and you can come to your own conclusions. Now for the setup on the left-hand side of the screen, we're going to be showing the best mid-journey prompts from Prompt Hero. These are going to be the images that we're comparing against. I'm going to pull these up so that they're much larger. The nice thing is this also has the prompt that it was generated with. So we're going to take that prompt and as a starting point, we're going to drop that into the right hand side, which is running my local version of stable diffusion on invoke AI. The only difference I've made here is that with invoke AI, I have set up another checkpoint file for stable diffusion called stably diffused wild. This is completely free. It's downloadable on Hugging Face, link down below. We're going to try and do as close to a side-by-side -side comparison as we possibly can. Let's get going. I tried to change things up a little bit here. I went with a number of different types of images, people, places, things, animals. I want to give us a wide variety of things so we can really get a side-by-side -side comparison of this. So this first one, here's the mid-journey image that was generated. And the prompt is beautiful, pale cyberpunk female with heavy black eyeliner, blue eyes, shaved side haircut, hyper detail, cinematic lighting, etc. I'm going to drop that directly into Invoke AI. I do have a negative prompt for distorted, deformed, disfigured, poorly drawn, etc. And the only other things I've changed here is I did change the aspect ratio so we do get more of these vertical images. Most of the prompts that I'm seeing here have that same aspect ratio. And we'll go ahead and invoke this and generate four images. All right, here are the first four results. You can see that it's it's actually pretty similar. You can see the facial style is similar, the haircut even, and the coloring. I like the lighting on this one. It's a little bit less photorealistic, and you can see that throughout these. Now, one of the things we could do is in the prompt, there's something called model shoot style. If we add that to the prompt, I wonder if we'll get a little bit more photorealistic out of it. I've got to say, overall, I'm pretty pleased with that. I don't think adding model shoot style to the prompt changed the result much. In fact, it's very similar to the two or three results before that. Moving on to the next image. Here's the result from Mid Journey. We've got spacesuit with boots, futuristic character, cinematic lighting, epic fantasy, hyper-realistic detail, 8K. All right, so let's grab that entire thing. The only thing I'm not grabbing is the aspect ratio. We've already got that set up ourselves, so we don't really need that. And for this to start, I'm gonna leave on the model shoot style. And bump this back up to four images and let's see what we get back. All right, here are the four results we got back for this same prompt. Now you can tell in the mid journey example, there's something interesting going on with the space helmet right at the top there. It looks like one of the legs is a little bit, I don't know, it's, it's almost missing a lot of detail there. And then some of the logos on the suit and such, which, you know, in general, stable diffusion doesn't do a terribly good job with. This one, on the other hand, from the local version, isn't too bad. The spacesuit has a lot of great detail in it. You lose a little bit of it in the mask and helmet, but overall that looks pretty good. You've got that nice lightning in the back, which was in the prompt. Also say this looks more like plasma in the mid-journey result than lightning, so this almost seems to be adhering to the prompt a little bit better. This again is a very similar style of spacesuit to that last one. You can tell though it looks like the logos could actually be legitimate logos on this spacesuit. I've got to say the background is also pretty photorealistic, so not a bad result. Same thing, although this person is, uh, they're not having a good time. They're out in space and they don't have any oxygen, so not a good day for this woman. And the final one, again, really realistic with the background and everything else. And uh, this is a pretty decent result. So again, I think from either system, you can get a, a pretty decent image out of this prompt. For our third one, I thought this was a really cool image. So it says it's a photo of, 8K ultra realistic Archangel with six wings, full body, intricate purple. Let's grab all of that, copy it over. All right, here's the first result. So you can see it's, it's actually fairly similar. Um, I would say that the, the one on the left is a little bit more artistic. It has some, some interesting details. Obviously you can't see the face. It's not 
detailed so much, but it's interesting that both ended up with a mask of sorts and some sort of almost like light device, light emitting device near the hands. So fairly similar result there. This one a little bit less so. I don't like the face on this one. It's, it's not quite detailed enough for my liking. It's almost too cartoony. Similar to the first one, this has a mask as well. It's kind of a nice result. And this one, same thing. I, again, don't like the face here. So fairly similar results from both sets. You can get some with a mask, some without, uh, but overall, fairly decent comparison. The prompt for our next image is Kneeling Cat Knight Portrait, Finely Detailed Armor, Intricate Design, Silver Silk, Cinematic Lighting 4K. The interesting thing about this is even though it says right in the prompt that it's a kneeling night cat, uh, it actually is not kneeling in this prompt. So let's see if we get anything different out of Invoke. This first result returned is interesting because it's almost the same pose from both cats in both systems. I do like the intricate detail a little bit more on the armor from the left, um, from the mid-journey result. But this is quite nice as well. Let's look at the next one. This actually followed the prompt a little bit better. This had a kneeling cat knight. Doesn't have a helmet on, but I've got to say the suit of armor is quite nice in this result. For the third one, very similar. It is a kneeling cat knight. It does have a suit of armor on. And for our final result, also kneeling down. And none of them have quite the same facial mask on. But I think with a little bit of tuning of our prompt, we could get that same level of detail and a similar result. Next up, who doesn't love Spider-Man? Maybe it's Spooderman. Anyway, we've got a couple of different things going on in this prompt. It's interesting because it says Portrait of Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Photorealism, Bokeh Blur, High Detail, and then it has an actual Sony camera listed there. So we'll drop this in. Let's see if we get something similar. So interesting for all four image results that came back. It really focused on the person's name rather than Spider-Man. So let's see if we can come back with that and modify our prompt just a little bit. We're going to take out the name here. and We'll see if we get an actual Spider-Man out of this. What an interesting one. I don't know if it's the checkpoint file that I'm using, or it must be something in the prompt itself. Let's start pulling that apart. But I'm getting back photos of actual people rather than Spider-Man. When we change the checkpoint file, it's not much better. We're just getting back Sony pictures. Interesting. Let's simplify this a bit and just say model shoot style portrait of Spider-Man. See what we can get back there. Obviously the issue is here, it's coming back with sort of a Spider-Man man. It doesn't quite have the full mask on. Here we go. This is actually a good representation. This has a reasonable, a high level of detail. It has a little bit more of that photorealism that we're going for. And it matches, I would say, the image on the left the most of the ones that came back. So it seems like you can at least get a similar result with a little bit of prompt tuning. All right, next up, we've got brunette man, wet brown hair with splash water over his face. Let's go ahead and pull this over. It looks like all four images came back with a very similar aesthetic. It looks like something that doesn't need a lot of tuning and tweaking in order to get a similar result out of the local stable diffusion, as you see with Mid Journey. This one is really cool. It's almost like a steampunk heart. Sci-fi mechanical human heart of a 14-year-old boy, which is a little bit weird and very specific, but you know, we'll pass that up. And let's go ahead and drop that in and see what stable diffusion comes back with. These are a little bit terrifying and also pretty cool. Love the detail in this one. It looks like the, the prompt is holding on to the 14-year-old boy, which I honestly don't know why that was in the original prompt. Let's drop that out and see if that actually changes things up. Seems unnecessary, especially given that there's no person or body attached to the heart that came back from Mid Journey. I don't even know what this is, but it's pretty cool. This is almost, it's a, a handheld heart. Really neat. Fascinating. It's similar to the first one. It's almost combining a hand and a heart in a very interesting way. And this one looks also very heart-shaped. So it looks like you can get back that level of detail. Again, with some prompt tuning, I don't see why you couldn't get back a very similar aesthetic to the mid-journey. And this one was interesting because it's a little bit more impressionistic in its artistic style. It's interesting because the prompt actually says, entrance to Mount, entrance to Mount Olympus, Greece, heavy archway, ornate, beautiful lush vines, goddess statues. I don't really see any statues in that prompt. Tree branches, water fountain, low angle photorealistic, which I actually don't think it's photorealistic. Let's see what we come back with our local system. 
All right, so in these, I have a similar criticism. I don't see any goddess statues being represented in these, but I would say that these are coming back generally more photorealistic than the result from Mid Journey, and that was a key part of the prompt. That might be a goddess statue up there, but this one's also missing some of the vines and trees of the other ones. For our next prompt, we have a jewelry design, Secura themed ring, gemstones and diamonds, luxury close up product view, a bunch of other prompt ideas that should get it a little bit higher resolution result. I think this one looks like it's photorealistic. It has this nice gemstone in the center. All right, and this one, it's a little more artificial. I don't like the addition of the kind of weird thumb in there. I'm gonna pass on that one. This is a little bit better, although I do prefer the lighting in the mid journey example. It just has a more natural feel to it. This is getting there. I think the, the reflection in the base of the band actually gives it a little bit more realism. It's a little less realistic up at the actual gemstone at the top, otherwise not too bad. And here we go, kind of similarly, this has a nice little bit more realistic look to it until you get to the gemstones at the top. Here's what happens if we add model shoot style to this. I'm gonna give this one one more shot. I'm gonna change the aspect ratio to square, 512 by 512. I don't know what it is with stable diffusion and the weird hands, but uh, it's not a great result. This one's a little bit more photorealistic. So I like this design that came back. I think that one did a good job. Similarly, this one isn't bad. I don't like the photo angle, but the overall result isn't too bad. And again, this one just sort of shines on the gemstones, not so much the ring itself, but not bad. And how could I pass this one up? It's a photo of the cutest red fox. Not just a cute red fox, but the cutest red fox. And here we go. I wouldn't say it's the cutest, but it's still a cute red fox. One thing I'm noticing is that the mid journey results, even though they have things like photorealistic in here, doesn't seem that photorealistic. So I think that's an interesting thing. I wonder if we take that out of here, what we end up coming back with. Because also, Unreal Engine, that doesn't seem to be represented too well. Let's pull out a couple of those. In fact, let's just say the original prompt. Portrait of the cutest red fox ever. That one's pretty fluffy and cute. I think you're going to have to be the judge on this. Didn't change tremendously. It still has that same look. A little bit different aesthetic, but pretty similar to what it was even before we changed the prompt. And for our final image, I love this result from Mid Journey. This cherry blossom tree and sort of a tree house in the middle of it. Let's go ahead and copy this over. Interestingly, the image on the right from the local stable diffusion is a lot more detailed in the house. The one on the left looks more like an artistic painting. And if you look at the details of the tree house itself, a lot of it doesn't make any sense. It looks like it's sort of nonsensically built and put together. And that happens sometimes with stable diffusion, regardless of what system you happen to be using. But I think this was a good side by side comparison either way. So, which of these systems won the challenge? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm going to leave this up to the community to decide rather than me telling you what to think. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to join my Discord, link in the description, hit like and subscribe so that YouTube knows that I'm doing a good job. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. We'll see you next time. Thank you all so much.